In this lesson, we're taking the concepts that we saw in previous basic probability lessons and taking them to the next level. So first, we're looking at the fundamental counting principle, and it's talking about um, the easiest way that I can put this is if I have a certain way of choosing one event and a certain way of choosing another event, then I can multiply the number of the ways that I can choose the first thing times the number of ways that I can choose the second thing, and that will give me the total possible outcomes. And we call this the fundamental counting principle. And this eventually will lead to how we uh, calculate combinations and permutations. But first, let's take a look at some basic fundamental counting principle problems. For example, in example one, part A, I have a restaurant that offers six appetizers, a soup or a salad, 12 entrees, and eight desserts. So how many different dinner specials are possible? Well, there's six possible appetizers times, I can choose between a soup or a salad, so that's two possible choices, times I can choose out of 12 entrees, and I can choose out of eight desserts. So if I multiply all this together, this will tell me how many different dinner specials I could possibly order. So there are 1,152 dinner specials. So one way to think about this problem is that I've got five spaces on my bookshelf. So one, two, three, four, five. And I can put the books in any order. <clears throat> but once I've put one book down, I have fewer books to deal with. So for this first spot on the bookshelf, I have five options. But once I put a book there, I've only got four options left. And then three, and then two, and then one. And if I multiply the five different ways I can fill this first spot times the four different ways I can fill this second spot, and so on and so forth, then I have 120 oops, arrangements. In the last example, you saw that we ended up multiplying 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And the way that we represent that is we would call that 5 factorial. And factorials are very important when we're calculating permutations or combinations. So you see that our vocabulary here is telling us that an arrangement of objects is a permutation. And since this is an arrangement, order is important and the amount of possible permutations or arrangements can be found using this formula. And I want to stress to you, look at your calculator and know how to use it because most scientific calculators will have some method for calculating a permutation and a combination. So if you look carefully at your calculator, you will probably see a NPR function somewhere in it. If not, I guess you better memorize that formula. In example two, we want to find out how many different seven digit codes we can create using the digits zero through nine. So using the digits zero through nine, I have 10 possible numbers to choose from. I'm arranging them, so this is a permutation and there's seven things that I'm arranging. So the formula tells me I'm going to calculate 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 7 factorial. So in my calculator, 10 factorial is 
3,628,800. I'm going to divide that by 10 minus 7 is 3, and 3 factorial is 6. So when I divide 3628800 by 6, I get 604,800 possible different codes. In part B, I'm using the number of possible different codes to find the probability of a certain kind of code. So if I want my, if I want to randomly generate a code, what is the probability that the first three digits would be odd? Well, 13579 are my five choices from which I can arrange the first three digits, and then I would multiply that by the different ways I can arrange the seven numbers remaining into four different spots, and I'm going to divide that by 604,800. Now, because I have two different permutations here to calculate, I'm going to use the permutation function in my calculator, and I would advise you to become familiar with your calculator as well. So, 5 P3 is 60 times 7 P4 is 840. And I'm dividing that by 604,800. And that is 0 0.083 repeating as our probability. Sometimes order does not matter when we're selecting items, and we call that a combination. And since a combination will be fewer than a, the number of permutations, we want to divide away the number of permutations uh, by the number of arrangements containing the same elements. So it looks very similar. We're just adding on to that formula that we're dividing by r factorial. And again, look at your calculator. Most of your calculators will have this function in it so that you don't have to work it out like I'm having to work it out. So I have seven seniors, five juniors, and four sophomores on the pep squad, and they need to choose 12 of them to sell spirit buttons. How many ways can the 12 students be chosen? What I'm trying to figure out is how many different ways 12 can be chosen from the 7 plus 5 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16. What I need to calculate is 16C12. So that is 16 factorial divided by 16 minus 12 factorial times 12 factorial. Since 16 factorial is a massively large number that my calculator can't really handle, I'm going to figure out what my denominator is first. Okay, so 16 minus 12 is 4, and 4 factorial is 24 and 12 factorial is also quite a large number so I'm just going to type all of that into my calculator so 16 factorial divided by parentheses 24 times this other very large number
and I get 1820. So there's 1,820 ways that I can select 12 students out of 16. In part B, they're saying if these students are randomly chosen, what is the probability that I will end up with four seniors, four juniors, and four sophomores? So that 1820 will be my denominator in this probability, and in my numerator, it will be four in the wrong place. Seven C four times. Five C four and four C four is just one. If I'm if I've got four people to choose from, how many different ways can I choose four people? That's just one. Okay, so all of this is going to be over eighteen twenty. And I have a better calculator to use today, so I'm not going to use the formula for the seven. C4 and the 5 C4, I'm just going to use that function in my calculator. So 7 C4 is 35. 5 C4 is 5. And when I multiply those, and put it over 18, 20. There is a zero point zero nine six probability, approximately. <laughs> 